Okay, so here we're going to look at a, an exam question which combines the techniques of mass spectrometry and infrared spectroscopy. Um, I'm going to come, come at this uh, with particular strategies. So the first thing we want to do is to work out the empirical formula using the technique that we've learned before with the data that they've given us. So we'll look at that first. Then we'll compare that to the mass spectrum and see what that tells us about the actual formula of the compound. Then from that we can go on to look at the infrared spectrum here and pick out what particular functional groups our compound could have uh, and so that will give us some information about the structure uh, and then finally <clears throat> we'll use all the other data available to us including the different fragments um, and from the mass spec uh, and other information they've given us to work out the um, to work out the formula okay so first of all we'll look at number one so they've given us here, we've got uh, one gram of the compound. Uh, it's got 0.133 grams of hydrogen, 0.6 grams of carbon. Uh, and so the rest, because it's got carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, must be oxygen. Okay, so number one is to do CHO for our empirical formula. So we've got uh, 0.133 of hydrogen, 0.6 of carbon, and then the rest must be um, oxygen. So I'm going to uh, work that on my calculation now. So we're going to do 1 take 0 0.133 take 0 0.6 gets me 0 0.267 must be from oxygen. Now I'll divide each of these by their relative atomic mass. And that's going to get me... Zero point zero five, zero point one three three, and zero point zero one six seven. Okay, and then from that point, we know we've got to divide by the smallest one. So the smallest one here is zero point zero one six seven. So um, that's going to be one. 0.5 divided by 0.167 is 3-ish and 0.133 divided by 0.167 is 8-ish. Uh, so that means our empirical formula is C3H8O. Now, what we can do now is work out that the mass of that is uh, 3 times 12 is 36, plus 8 is 44, plus 16 is 60. So the uh, relative molecular mass of that fragment is 60. Okay. So we've done step number one is working out the empirical formula. Then we're going to go on to do step number two. We're going to work out the molecular formula uh, by looking at the mass spectrum. So for this, uh, so the peak highest up the M, uh, M over Z uh, scale we can see is at 60. So that is our uh, molecular ion peak. Sometimes called M plus. So what that tells us is that the if the molecular ion if the yeah molecular ion the molecule has a mass of 60, then it must have the same formula as the empirical formula. So uh, so the molecular relative molecular mass is also 60, so it, that must also be C3H80. So for this now, we know we're looking at a molecule which has uh, a formula of C3H80. Okay, now second, yeah, well, number three here, we can go on to look at the infrared spectrum. Um, so what we've got to do here is look at our data sheets. Um, to find out which um, which functional group we've got. Um, so what we can see here is quite a broad uh, peak uh, between 3,200 3,500. This looks like sorry an OH peak in particular for an alcohol. Now. Um, OH peaks for carboxylic acids are very, very broad. They have a, a, sh a shape that's more like that. Uh, this is 
This is less broad, so this one corresponds to an alcohol. If you compare it to our data sheet, we'll see that it kind of matches in number what you expect for an OH. This bit here is going to be CHs. Probably in here we've also got C single bonds O, but that's less clear. The really diagnostic thing here is that we have an OH group. Okay, so if I turn this over, then what we're looking at here then is saying that we've got C3H8O. Um, which is an alcohol, okay, alcohol, so, you yeah, know, which, which compounds could have, could be an alcohol with the formula C3H8O, so, uh, 1, 2, 3, OH is one option, you could also have uh, a secondary alcohol with that formula, which would look like this, that's propan 1 ol that's propan 2 ol <coughs> now we could what we can do now is use the fragments from the mass spectrum to uh, help us work this out further so clearly we've got quite a major peak here at 31 so one fragment which has a mass of 31 um, so where can we find that so we might have to break it down a bit, we can kind of play with each of these, have a think, what would we get if we had that fragment, well it's going to be 17, um, so 16 for the oxygen, 1 for the hydrogen, and then we've got a CH2 group, which has a mass of 14, so that's 14 plus 17, well that would be 31, so CH2OH would be 31. Um, does that seem reasonable? Um, would we get something similar in this molecule? Well, again, we got the 17 for an OH group, and then this is now a CH, so that would have a mass of 13, so that would be 30. So the fact that this is 31 kind of indicates to me that, so that should be a positive charge, if it's coming up in our mass spectrum, it has is a positive ion. Um, so this suggests to me that actually what we've got is this fragment here, which suggests we, the compound we're looking at is propan 1 ol, not propan 2 ol. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think I think we've successfully there identified that the compound X is propan 1 ol. If we look at other information they've given us. They told us this reacts with ethanoic acid. This reacts with ethanoic acid in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid to make compound Y, which has a molecular formula below. Um, now this is a sterification, we haven't looked at sterification, so don't worry too much about this bit. Uh, kind of the important parts that I want you to look at, we've already done, but I'll do this for completion. So this is making ester, so if we're reacting our alcohol with, with acid, we're making an ester, which you may remember from GCSE. Clearly, uh, if we make if it's propan one ol, we're going to react that with ethanoic acid. So we're reacting propan one ol with ethanoic acid, which looks like that. So uh, kind of drawing compound Y, then it will be the product that's formed from that. So it's going to be the ester that then has a propyl group. So one, two, three, like that. So that is compound Y. Okay, so don't worry too much about the esterification bit, we'll come back to that. Main step is kind of thinking about the strategy overall. So, in fact, that first we worked out our empirical formula. Secondly, we, um, we com kind of compared it to the mass spectrum to work out our molecular formula. Thirdly, we used infrared spectroscopy to pick out functional groups. And then once we had an idea of what kind of molecules we could have, so in particular propan 1 or propan 2 or we then use the fragments from the mass spectrum to identify in particular which one it was. Okay. So that's the idea. What you can do now is uh, look at the summary questions for the uh, spectroscopy section in a textbook and use those to help you practice these sorts of questions. Okay.